Okay, in this video, we're gonna be covering uh, washes and shades. So a wash is essentially a really diluted paint um, where if we're using the Citadel stuff, um, we have a couple different things they have. We have um, base coat, we have layers which go over top of the base coat. Um, we have shades, we have dries, we have all sorts of stuff. But today what we're talking about is a shade. The shade, you can see the consistency in here. It's pretty watered down. Um, so we're actually going to use this stuff right out of the paint pot versus this where we looked at it in our last video, the layers and the bases where we're actually going to water it down to make it into that milk consistency. This, we want it to be watered down because we're trying to get all of the detail to pop in all of these grooves. Um, and we want the paint to just adhere to that area. So I've already done the front of this figure. And if you can tell, I'm going to try to zoom in. You can see the detail and the, the level of detailing that's in the sculpt that isn't present on the backside because I haven't done that yet. This is just base coat right now. Um, so what I'm trying to do now is bring out that same level of detail on the front side on the back side of the figure. So we're using a wash brush um, and you can make washes yourself um, by really taking any paint color you want and diluting it pretty significantly. So what we're trying to do is you're tinting with a shade, you're tinting the existing paint slightly. So what I'm doing on this one is going over this orange with a brown and this shade is seraphim sepia so we're we're trying to get a brown to make it look like more of a rock um most of the time when you're doing washes on things that are more industrial um you're going to be doing black um washes on most things um but you can use any kind of wash i mean you can use a blue wash on a purple um you know, it's all about mixing correctly. I mean, you're never going to really use like a yellow wash on um, like a yellow wash on a purple. That doesn't make any sense. Um, so it's about knowing your colors and how they're actually going to look on the base. So the key that we just looked at in the last video was making sure you have a, a really good coverage on your base coat. And now that we have that base coat, step two in our process is going to be bringing out the detail in that sculpt by applying this. So as you can see, I'm just going over it lightly, but I'm using a decent amount of this stuff because it not only goes in these grooves where I want them to go, but it also changes the color of the base coat slightly too. I want it to be rocky. I don't want all orange. I want the orange to show through, but I don't want it to be nothing but like this bland, dull orange. So if you see it right now, while it's wet, it has that wet look to it because it's just wet paint. This dries normally, and each one of these spikes is gonna go back to a more orangey color than it is brown, and the brown is gonna stay in, in the grooves. I could just as easily have used a black with this. I just think that with this specific figure, this character, the brown works better because I'm trying to make it look like natural rock. Um, black would have, would have worked fine. I just don't think it would have looked as natural. It would have looked, I don't know, harder and not as natural. That's not what I'm trying to achieve. So, I mean, you can, as you can see, I mean, look on the right side here versus the left side here. You can see the difference already. And how it lays and how it goes into each groove, each nook and cranny of the actual sculpt itself. And this works on everything. So if I were to take something like this 
and this is primed. This is an ideal. I'm gonna have to reprime this after showing you. But you can see what this is doing on white. It's going into the grooves and it's slightly tinting the white primer, but it's laying in the areas between each rock in the sculpt, which is exactly what you want it to do. You may have to go over an area, you know, a couple times to get it to go where you want. But this is done, you know, to, to show more detailing in the sculpt. And this works with pretty much anything. I mean, there, there's sculpt work in every miniature or any action figure across the board. You can even do, like if you did a uh, Moon Knight and it was like the, this, like a all white painted character, you can go with a light gray wash to bring out the highlights in the, in the uh, sculpt without detracting from the all white paint job. And that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to complement the existing color that's already there without taking away from all the work you've already done. But you have to use the right brush. You have to use the right colors or it's not gonna work. And that's it. I mean, you're just moving the brush over top of the sculpt and making sure you're using enough in the areas you need to use it in so that it goes into the recesses and areas you want it to. It's a certain look you're trying to achieve with this. And this is, like I said, in, in this video process that we're doing in this series, this wash is on this figure, it's funny because it's it's there's certain figures I would do, I would do a different order. In this one, I'm trying to get all of the detail in these, um, with these washes, the shading. I'm trying to get that done first before I do dry brushing and shadows, highlighting, um, and the reason why is because I'm going to be lightly painting over all of this to bring out additional color, but I don't want to do highlights or um, shadows and then only go over it and tint it again with this shade um, because that would kind of ruin the highlights in the shadow. So we're gonna go with this first now, and then we're gonna move into the shading And then we're gonna do highlighting after that. But again, this is just, this is called a wash. And there's other techniques you can use with a wash. If you feel like you, you've done too much, you can take just a paper towel and wipe it. And a wipe's gonna leave some stuff on there, um, but it's not gonna leave all of the paint from the wash on the surface. So, I mean, you could use a wipe technique and the wipe, like I said, is, is just cleaning off the excess as you go. If you're going to do that, have your paper towels ready and do it as you go. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Just, like I said, move it around. Move, you're moving really, really loose, diluted paint where you want it to. So even if you put too much on an area to begin with, like, like that, move it to the recesses of the other. Th these brushes are really flexible, loose brushes where it, they're made for you to move the paint around. And this paint is specifically made to be moved around. You 
in the areas that you're supposed to be getting it. So don't be afraid if you put too much on. Just uh, quickly move to the area you want it to be in. And I used, this is a giant figure. Um, we all can see that. So I bought this brand new yesterday. And I, you saw I only did the front. Um, that's, so that said, I, I may actually need to buy more of this so that I have the exact same shade throughout the entire thing. And I'm not substituting it with something else. bring it around to the hand so you can see this hand has zoom out a little bit has no detail on it yet but you can see all those scrapes and scratches and rock sculpting that I've done and now look at the difference it's we're moving it into the grooves of these spikes and this can be anything. This can be a bicep or, you know, a fold in, in a pair of pants on a figure. It could be anything that you want the paint to lay in that groove area. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, something sculpted like this. We want it to, you're going to use it on all aspects of something. Let's move this arm up slightly. There we go. And we're gonna move it right here. Again, how much you wanna use, totally up to you. I'm pretty heavy with it because this is extremely detailed and I want that detail to show. I spent too much time sculpting this thing not to show the detail off. So let's move. You can see that it's in those grooves on the uh, on the hand in each of the knuckles. But I still want a little bit more. Again, so I'm moving the paint into those areas and then in those recesses where I want it to be. Let's move our light source around a little bit. There we go. Made it a little bit lighter. So the light's not as harsh for you viewing it. I still need to get under the arms. A couple areas of the leg. I did one of these and I used red over top of the orange. And that worked well. Um, I just didn't want the red tint this time. I thought it was a little too cartoony and too exaggerated. And with this one, I'm going brown because I'm going for 
more realism. When I say, when I say realism, obviously this isn't realistic. It's a rock creature. But I'm saying realism in terms of I want it to look organic. I want it to look like natural rock that you see in real life. Dirty, grimy. unique texture that actually shows versus uh, versus a texture that doesn't because it doesn't that's not normal. So the interesting thing is, you know, painting is never really done until it's done. And I'm still seeing a little bit of primer on a couple spots that I need to clean up. And I still need to add the white band at the top here um, for the Fantastic Four colors and do the four logo. So that stuff hasn't been done yet, but you know, stuff that we're working on. Slow going. But again, like I said in the last video, if you're trying to paint everything and get it done in one sitting, you'd be sadly disappointed in how it looks. And whoever buys it or owns it or wants it later on, they're gonna be sadly disappointed. So don't disappoint your fan base or your customers or even just somebody that you're showing this thing to. Nobody wants to see junk. And that's really it. Um, I'll let this dry and see if there's any other areas that need to be touched up later. But this is how you dry brush. I'm sorry, this is how you apply a wash. We're doing dry brushing next, and that was a, got, ahead of, got ahead of myself there for a second. So again, wash brush, wash brush. On a big figure like this, I'm using a brush that's pretty thick. Um, you're using shades that are already pre-made for washes. You're cleaning your brush really well when you're done and you're applying it generously. So with a miniature, don't worry too much about it because that stuff's gonna last you forever. With a custom action figure, it's not gonna last you nearly as long as you want it to because you're gonna go through it quick. But the effect that you get from a dry brush and a wash and a base coat done correctly in the end. That's what you want. And if you look here, um, that the the lighter color pink was done in a damaged face thing with regular layer coat. And I used this reddish shade to go in there too to show that you know more of a healed scabbed area. Um, so this stuff is is pretty versatile, can be used for a lot of things. Um, not just this stuff, but again, every figure should have some level of brushing, base coating, and then detailing. If I were to do it on this Moon Knight figure, which is not done yet, I would have the whole thing primed and painted base coat white. And then I would go over it with a light gray wash to bring out these folds and uh the the folds in the in the sculpt in especially down here where it folds into the pants where where the uh the cuff is uh where the break in the pants is and on look at the back here i mean that's that's just waiting for somebody to put uh a light gray in there and then all the folds in the in the mask 
would hold a light gray um, wash really, really well. So don't be afraid of washes. Um, they are they are there to help you. I think it's very they're really easy to use. Um, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, please write them down below, and I'll be happy to answer them. If you're looking for custom figure work, um, hit me up on um, either Instagram or Facebook um, under the same name as this channel. And um, in the meantime, uh, check out the rest of the series of this video and like and subscribe to the channel so you can see more tutorials on on painting. Um, and I'm going to go through the whole series. The next up for this series is going to be dry brushing um, shadows. And then we'll cover dry brushing highlights after that. And then we're going to talk about um, putting on a, um, a sealant in the end. So keep following. I appreciate you guys looking at it. Uh, thanks for checking out my work.